everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. I thought today we could have a quick video about aquarium photography. So shooting videos, shooting pictures of fish and aquariums and all the different challenges that we face when we try to do these things. I do have to preface some of this to say I'm definitely not an expert in this, but I do make videos about aquariums and I do take pictures of fish quite often and every now and again I get a good one. So I thought I'd share some of those tips that get me there. Typically this is the same as any other method of photography. When you look up any guides it's all about your shutter speed, your aperture, your light sources, all those good things. Same sort of thing, there are just a few extra challenges when you're trying to shoot fish in a glass box. So normally your light sources would be a great thing. So right now I've, I'm sitting beside a big window, I've got loads of light streaming in so I'm really well lit. That on the aquarium is a bit of a problem because it's casting shadows, we're seeing light spots, dark spots all over the place, we're getting reflections and that's just not any good at all. So we need to worry about these sort of extra things when we're taking pictures of fish. So if you're taking a shot of an aquarium in the daylight, quite often this is a problem you get. So you'll see my hand waving around on the right hand side, but you'll also see on the left hand side there's a big massive reflection from the window. And this is no use to man nor beast. So this is a, a kind of common problem. You've got your subject, the aquarium, windows, shining reflections, stopping you getting into the, the, the tank itself without seeing all those reflections. So you can solve this in a few ways. You can either shut all the curtains. Good, but not that great. You can wait until night time. That's really the best way to do it. Uh, or you can change the angle, so rather than going straight on, you can move the whole rig round a bit so you find an angle where you've not got the reflection of the windows. And that's about as good as you can do for the daytime. I also would recommend a CPL filter, so that's a circular polarising filter which will help cut down some of the um, reflections that you get out of the glass. Another way you can do this is some weird and wonderful stuff. One of these things. <laughs> it's like a big hood, a big extra hood for close-up stuff that you can put this hood up against the glass and the other end over the end of your camera and that, that cuts down all the glare so you can see straight through the glass. So that's most of the things you can do about your environment, deciding what goes on outside of the fish tank. Another thing you can do is stability. It's the main thing really. So if you're here trying to take pictures of your tank or your fish, it's never going to go well. So invest in something like this or any kind of tripod. If you can't get a tripod, use a strap so you can put the strap over your head and kind of push it out to steady it as much as possible, or even if your camera's focus distance will allow, allow it, get right up to the glass and use it pressed as the glass as a way of st stabilizing your shot if you need to. Um, quite often, if your camera won't allow it, you won't be able to get an in-focus shot because you'll be too close to the subject. But again, it depends on your camera or your phone, how good that will be. If you are using your phone, I'll go and get my phone. If you are using your phone to take some of these shots, um, a really good way to start, I mean, don't go diving in buying expensive cameras, or not that this is particularly expensive. Get your phone, download a good app, whether that's something like Open Camera, where it allows you to dial in your settings and mess around with them, or the Lightroom app, it has a camera option itself. Practice, play around, take lots and lots and lots of pictures. Um, again, with the camera, this is one that I learned from Jimmy from Aquarium Co-op. Use your, your fingers, again, to make sure you're keeping it stable. And you can follow around, pressed up against the glass. You need to wipe down the glass afterwards, which is a bit of a thing, but there you go. You can follow your fish around, it's just so much easier and so much more stable that way. So in terms of taking pictures, it's the same as any other kind of photography tutorial you might have watched. It's all about the shutter speed, it's all about the aperture, it's all about being in manual and practice, practice, practice. Take lots of pictures. You might take 50 pictures and get one usable one out of it and that's normal, but for me it is anyway. And, and just keep going at it. Shutter speed I like to keep quite high. I mean the kind of lowest that I would normally go to would be kind of 250, but I want to get up as high as I can towards a thousand even because often Fish are fast, they're always moving, so if your camera or your phone has a sport mode on it, use that, because that can help you keep up with them. 
Light is really important. So like I say, keep the light down on the outside of the tank. But if you've got more lights or you can move them around, add them. Because the more light you've got, the higher the shutter speed you can go without being really dark. Spend a bit of time getting used to your equipment. Um, I mean, you can get fancy gimbals and all those things and they will all help. But if you just get used to your equipment and knowing what all the settings are going to do, you'll get much better results much quickly. Much quickly, much more quickly. Spend a bit of time um, getting used to the setup. So, like right now I'm dancing around the front of the tank. The fish are kind of going, what the hell is this guy up to? And they're all the way to the back. Spend a bit of time in your setup. Get your tripod out. Position your tripod. Um, if you do have a camera or a phone that has kind of remote shooting capabilities, use them. So set it up, frame the shot the way you want to frame it, and walk away. Come back in five minutes, don't crowd the tank. Take the shot that you want when the fish is in the frame. Um, wait, time. Time heals all wounds. Time heals all pictures as well. Put a little bit of effort into the framing of your shot. Make sure that you've got what you want in there. Make sure your tank's not on an angle. So many times I've watched videos of people and I think, how's the water staying in their tank and their, their horizons like that? If you're doing a piece to camera like this, make sure you're in the frame and it's not cutting you off here. I've seen that so many times as well. Can you see me? Can you see the fish? What is the thing that you're talking about? Is it something I need to be saying so the focus is on me? Or is it something you want to show them so the focus needs to be on the thing you're showing. Gimbals are great things, so quite often if I go down to, I don't know, do a fish shop tour or something like that, or talk to someone about their fish room, I'll use a little handheld gimbal, like this thing here. So this is the DJI Osmo 2. Um, and it's fantastic, it can keep things all steady without going all over the show. Another thing I'll do is take a long time over Getting things into focus, deciding what I want the background to be, deciding what fish it is that I want to take a picture of, um, decide whether I want to be in autofocus or not, and then kind of framing the shot. So I'll see there our reflections come in, so I know I don't want to be stood like that. I want to be given it a bit more of an angle like this. So if we choose this little rainbow fish here, I'm going to try and follow him for a little minute. Then I'm going to let him swim away. That might be a bit of B-roll that I want to use. Um, I just focus, try and get the eye to focus. Get a few seconds on the fish. And either let him swim out of frame, or her in this case. And then that can be the end of that shot, and that's quite a good shot. Same with these guys, if I want to get some of these up close, I'll just try and get the focus on them to hold focus for a minute. Well, they're kind of bunched up, so that's not a very good shot, so I'll just sit here and I'll wait. I'll wait for them to swim past and I'll take a shot in a while. I might try and get another fish. And let's try and get one of these little neons, uh, cardinals rather. I can cut this up later and get a usable shot out of it. Try and follow him around for a couple of seconds. And if he doesn't swim out of shot himself, I can just move the camera and let him go like that. Um, sometimes I'll go around the other side. I mean, obviously try and not scare all the fish to death. That's never a good thing. Um, I can decide whether I want zoomed in tight or a wider shot. So here for example, it's just got the window reflection in it so I know I don't want that. So in this tank I can get kind of this angle or that angle and that's my options here. But for pictures, I'll just stand here, take picture after picture after picture, and eventually I'll get a good one. The beauty of digital cameras. And then the last kind of cheat mode, if you like, is these great little inventions. These little sticky tabs. Um, 
I sell these on my website. You can go and check it out, aquariumadventures.co.uk. Link in the description. Plug over. But these, you can just pop on the glass and all the fish will congregate. Because quite often, you being here messing around means that the fish just aren't interested. They're like, I'm going to wait till that big lump goes away. But if I stick out a bit, a bit of food, they'll quite happily come along. Just got my elusive black ghost knife. Fish has come out to say hello, so I thought I'd try and get a wee shot of him. So you can pop one of these tabs on the glass, wait for all the fish to come round, and then you can click away at your heart's content. Brilliant little tools. And very reasonably priced too. Not my own work, these are all things I've learned off other people. Um, but practice makes perfect, that's the, that's the biggest tip you can possibly get. Spend some time, let all the fish relax around you, take shot after shot after shot, and then edit. If it's video, edit your videos down. Nobody wants to see a 10 minute time lapse. Nobody wants to see 15 minutes of B-roll and everything. Take 15 minutes of footage, but edit it down into like 10 seconds. Um, we are photography, again, edit, take pictures, take pictures. You might not have framed it correctly, but you can crop it in Photoshop or other tools like GIMP if you don't have Photoshop, which are perfectly free and just as good. Editing is a video in and of itself. Um, you can put loads into your editing, but learn the basics. Learn how to shoot in raw if you can, bring back some colours, understand the effect that exposure has on things, mess around. As I say, just keep playing around with these things and eventually you'll get some good photos and you'll learn which techniques work for you and you can employ them more and more and the longer you do it, the better you'll get. So I hope you found some of that interesting or useful. If you did, let me know in the comments any tips you've got or any tricks that you use um, and we'll see you next time. Bye!